a casual company waiting to go overseas. There was no ship ready for us, so they put us in mess duty. They picked 16 men out for mess duty at the Women's Marines, which was called, they were called WRs. Right. Area M24, just down the road here. Women Reserves. And I don't mind telling you, it was good duty. They told us that the average number of women out of 350, the average number of women who came for breakfast was 100. The first day we were there, there were over 300 for breakfast. <laughs> so, as far as this chapel, all I can remember is we came here, I came here for Mass. And, uh, and this was a Women Marines Chapel at the time? Yes, yes. How, how come you got to come? Well, I was, it was near here. I was here with the women. So they Marines. let other so, people come in, yeah, aside so, from women. Right. In the chapel, you mean? In the chapel. Yeah. Interesting. I don't know, but they had a priest here every Sunday for a mass for us. And the women. The women Marines. And I had a friend who was a, the, uh, in charge of the, he was a caretaker of the bunkhouse, the ranch house. So he invited me over quite a bit. I spent a lot of time in that ranch house there, visiting with him. And that's the extent of my visit here. I understand you had a date there. Oh, I had quite a few dates. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking about at the ranch house. Oh, yes, I did bring a young lady in there with me once. Just to show her off? Yeah, the, guys, the guy made hamburgers for us and we visited here. Oh, okay. Interesting. Yeah. That's a different time for us. Can you say your name for the recording and also spell the last name, please? The name is Kasmer Jedwiziak. The last name is spelled J-A-D-W-I-S-I-A-K. I always went by the nickname of Kai, K I, oh. which is an abbreviate, a, a nickname for the Polish pronunciation of Kazimierz. Kazimierz. Kazimierz is the Polish pronunciation. There, the nickname is derived from that. And that name stuck with me because when we were children, we all spoke Polish. Do you remember when you came into the Corps? I enlisted November twentieth, nineteen forty-four. And uh, you were how old at that time? I was seventeen. And it took me when I was 18. Where did you enlist? Paris Island. Oh, you did? Okay. Paris Island and combat training in Camp Lejeune. And the, where did your family live? Port Clinton, Ohio. My goodness, that's a travel. Yeah. How did you get from Ohio to Paris Island? How did that happen? Well, I enlisted in Cleveland. Oh, okay. So in Cleveland, they put me on a train and sent me to Paris Island. Did you get one of those... Uh, Pulling cars? Did they, or were you not in that group? Well, you know, just no. I didn't get a Pullman car, but across the country, after we, after we completed our combat training at Camp uh, uh, Lejeune, we went cross country by train. It was a troop train. There were all those we call them cattle cars. Yes. They were like boxes with windows and sliding yes. doors. And there was one Pullman on that car train, and wouldn't you know it? I was assigned that Pullman. You were. I was so lucky I couldn't believe it. <laughs> I think it took us five days to cross the country. It went very slow. The train would pull over very often. We'd wait sometimes for over an hour. I don't know the reason, but... Uh, Other trains passed. <laughs> and the engineer, he wouldn't get his orders. He never knew where he was going until they, they told him. In those days, they traveled in secrecy. Yes. So I had the Pullman, which was really nice crossing the desert. You know how they cooled those trains? No. Yeah. Those Pullmans, they had huge tanks on the side, and they filled with ice. And they blew air over that ice into our car. Oh, my goodness. Wow. And I'd visit my friends in the, in the box cars. They were so dirty and hot. And when we got to the desert, I quit visiting them. I just stayed in my Pullman and took my afternoon naps. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy, I had a mate. <laughs> then we came here to Camp Pendleton. I got, went on to mess duty with the girls and overseas after six weeks. Where'd you go overseas? Went to, to Guam for a while and then they went to North China. I spent nine months in North China. And what did you do in North China? I was a tank driver with the first tank battalion, first division. Oh my goodness. Tank okay. battalion. It's good, I could do that, I liked it. Okay. Tell them about the, the uh, frying the eggs. What? When you were assigned to frying the eggs. Frying eggs. eggs. Frying eggs. Oh, oh. You know, when I was on mess duty here for the WRs, uh, uh, Vicky uh, Bassalone, 
We called her Vicky. I, that wasn't her real name, but we called her Vicky. I don't know why. Sergeant Best Woman. She was my sergeant in charge of the mess hall. And she put me to frying eggs first day, 700 eggs. Well, after I fried about 50 of them, she came up over my shoulder and saw all those eggshells and eggs. And she gently took me by the arm and she says, Private, he says, we're going to assign you to, table, to, to setting tables. <laughs> <laughs> She was a, she was Lena a, was her name. Pardon? Lena. Lena? Was her name. Yeah. I met her before she passed away. Did you? It was not too long ago. I think 209 she died, didn't she? Something like that. Yeah. And then... She, she was a career. And, yeah. and she, yeah, and she, well, no, she got out a little bit after he passed away. She stayed in a while, but she, I don't know how, I have to look at her record. I see. I don't know. I know but I know she wasn't in... in Afterwards, she went to work for a company up in near LA, mm -hmm. and that's where she lived and where she died. Um, but she came down, she was still active with the Women Marines at the Association, and she would come down to their lunches. Yeah. She, got the no she got the, no the notification of her husband's death on her birthday, her 30th birthday. Oh my goodness. Yes. She was a good woman. She was a good, good son. And she never remarried. Well, I understand that. Yeah, she never remembered. And then uh, before we, the day we were leaving, she pulled me aside and asked me if I'd like to go into Cooks and Bakers School. She said, I can get you to Cooks and Bakers School. I declined. <laughs> she was surprised that I passed up that offer. But I wanted to go overseas with, with my buddies. Right. So I did. And that's it. How long were you overseas? Nine months. And I'm sorry, what did you say you did in China? You I drove a tank. I was a tank driver. And so, did you teach Chinese to drive tanks? No, 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 no. We were we were our own separate unit. But we were, working with the Chinese at the time, right? No, we no. were there to to uh, we were there to escort convoys to supply troops to the American bases throughout North China who were stationed there to protect the infrastructure for the cities to bring coal and electricity into the cities because the communists controlled the countryside. I see. And, and they uh, would raid things. Yes, they would pull raids on the, those bases. And uh, we were all, our main purpose there, though, was to gather up all the Chinese, uh, the Japanese soldiers and their families, and put them on ships and send them back to Japan. They were well established there. They had been there since 1937. They had their own schools and everything. In fact, our billet was a Japanese girls' school. Huh. Very nice billet. Do you remember what... Uh uh, military group you were with. I know you said you were with tanks. But I was with the 1st Division. 1st Marine Division? 1st Marine Division. Tank battalion. Okay. And do you know what tanks it was? M4 tanks? Sherman tank. 37 tons. Were you 1st tanks or 2nd tanks? or? Pardon? Usually battalions are named. I was a 1st tank battalion. 1st tank battalion. 1st tank battalion under Colonel Stanley Shunchevsky. Oh, another, another Yeah, one. yeah. He was good to me. <laughs> I guess so. Yeah. Anything you remember from that that we should know about? Yeah, no, I don't. Learn from? How many people that were in the tank? With there were five. All together? Yeah. And you slept in the tank? No. We would we park, we would pull over side and dig a foxhole and dry the tank over, take them out, dismount our machine guns, and sleep under the tank. Oh, that's interesting. Till we reached the, the city, then the, like, uh, the end of one of, one of my trips was uh, Beijing, which is now Beijing, and the, the Marines uh, they confiscated uh, a lot of buildings, like the German Bund, the German ambassador's home in China. It was a beautiful, beautiful home, and I had a bed there that you had to climb, jump up to get into, <laughs> and the room was big enough for a whole squad. Oh my goodness! And it was really good duty. I, I'd sleep as long as I wanted to. <laughs> and I'd go into the main dining room and the cook would ask me, he said, what would you like for breakfast, sir? <laughs> and it was really good. That was, we rested before we went back. Have you ever gone back? Pardon? Have you ever gone back to no, Beijing? I haven't. Or no, I haven't. Interesting. Yeah. China was very interesting. When, especially when you consider I was just an 18-year-old boy off the farm. Yeah. Never left home. What kind of farm were you from? It was a fruit farm. Oh, okay. What kind of fruit did you grow? Mostly peaches. Oh. But in those days, we didn't have a tractor, we had horses. 
cows and chickens and geese and ducks was on during the Depression. So he had to raise food for all, feed for all those. So he raised everything. Yes. To be self-contained. Yes. Yeah. We ate good. We had very little money, but we ate good. So when the war come, came, we were in good shape. We were a rugged bunch, really. The men who went through the Depression. If a war had to come, it came at a good time because there were a good rugged bunch of American men at that time. Yeah, so not to not to degrade the men of today, but how many, how many brothers did you say you had? There were eight boys and one girl in my family. And one girl. Mm -hmm. She must have been pretty lonely. Yeah, yeah. Off. she was the oldest. She's busy. So, but we had to help with the housework also. Yeah. yeah. And all all of the boys except for the youngest went into the service. Is that correct? Yes. Neither one of us could have, every one of us could have been deferred because we were farmers, but we all volunteered. There were seven of us. Wow. And unfortunately, one of them didn't come back. He was one of the first man killed from our area, Stanley. He was on an aircraft carrier wasp. The Japanese sunk it on Guadalcanal, at Guadalcanal. Did you see much battle? No. In your tank? no. No. So you just the war was the war was over, over when I went overseas. Oh, you did. But, okay. But the uh, the Chinese, the, the Japanese, I mean the communists. We fought the communists. We lost eighteen men dead when we were in China. Oh my. But I didn't have to worry because they had all small arms and I was in a tank. <laughs> That's why we had the MS. I've got the big gun, right? Yeah. <laughs> and we lost eighteen dead in nine months. Well, that sounds quite a, quite a service. Yeah. Thank you. I enjoyed my career with my stint with the Marines. Mm 